Great, we're going to get started. Uh, Deputy Chief Posada is in the room from Anaheim. Uh, Deputy Chief Harvey, excuse me. Uh, but we'll get started. And we'll work in your judgment on this, please. I hate when people are late. So you also need courts. So. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. Um, thank you so much for coming today uh, for our awareness campaign kicking off our Be the One for another great season. So we're really appreciative that you're all here today. Uh, before I get into uh, some of our speakers and introduce uh, our distinguished panel, uh, we're all here today because obviously human trafficking is an ugly truth here in Orange County. We know that the exploitation of children in the sex trade industry is even more despicable. And I will not allow this in our county, and I know we will not allow this in our county, and none of you will allow this in our county, and that's why we're here today, and why you're here today. The statistics are incredibly appalling. In 2012, when we start focusing attention on human trafficking, we had 17 children who were victims of sex exploitation. That number doubled to 35 in a year later. And in 2015, we had 46 child victims of the sex trade traffic, uh, trafficking here in Orange County. Last year, it almost doubled to 73. So the natural question, of course, is, is it, is it getting worse? Or are we bringing more attention to it so more victims are coming forward? Certainly, it's probably a combination of the two, but certainly the efforts of our focus uh, have made a significant, significant difference. Not a single child victim is acceptable in our county, and we will root out this evil, and we will not stop until we have success in every venture. So we're really excited to launch this campaign today uh, to bring awareness and continued and renewed awareness this is not a, a comfortable discussion. It's a difficult discussion. A lot of the folks that are here today, who I know very, very well and work with every single day, um, are willing to have this conversation with our community. But when you see the Be the One, which we launched with OCTA, and we'll hear from our CEO, Daryl Johnson, in a, in a few minutes, and I, I'm on the board of OCTA. When we started this campaign, Be the One, it was about being the one who's going to do something about it. And I think we're all of us together and I'm very proud of the campaign that our county and OCTA has launched in conjunction with our social services agency. So today we have the Orange County Transportation Authority, the County of Orange Social Services Agency, the Orange County Human Trafficking Task Force, the Orange County Sheriff's Department, the Orange County Superior Court, the Association of California Cities, Orange County, Vanguard University's Global Center for Women and Justice, I understand, do I have this right? We give them credit for the pins that we have today. Thank you very much. The Race Foundation and Klein and Klein for the graphic design services. Thank you to them all. We'd also like to thank the city of Anaheim and Chris Murray, our great city council member from the city of Anaheim, who will address us in a few minutes. But they allowed us to use this great venue we call Arctic. Arctic, not Arctic, sorry. Um, and you're going to, and I also want to introduce some of the elected officials and dignitaries who are here. Uh, I didn't see Bruce Whitaker, but he did RCP, the mayor of Fullerton. Bruce is mayor, okay, he'll join us shortly. Uh, the Winning Hills Councilwoman Barbara Kokeman. I didn't see Barbara, but she RCP. <clears throat> Laguna Hills, excuse me, Laguna Woods, Mayor Pro Tem Carol Bourne. Wave Carol, thank you for being here. We have Jim Tonazaki, the Chief Assistant District Attorney. Thank you for being here, Jim. We have our Chief of Probation, Steve Sentman, Chief Sentman. And Richard Sanchez, I saw just get here, our director of our health care agency, thank you for being here. And if there's other folks that, um, Allison, you just let me know, and I can make sure I introduce them uh, throughout the program. So at this time, I'd like to introduce Daryl Johnson, the CEO of the Orange County Transportation Authority. Uh, Daryl is appointed by the board of the OCTA. Uh, Chris was a former director of the OCTA. I'm presently honored to be a member of the OCTA board. And uh, Daryl is uh, just a fantastic CEO for our organization, and he's been very instrumental to make sure that we uh, are good stewards of the campaign and be the one, including our bus routes and other programs we have to inform the public. Please welcome Daryl Johnson. Thank you. 
thank you, uh, to all of you for being here. And thank you, Supervisor Spitzer, for the introduction and for all that you do, all the work that you do along with the law enforcement and the human trafficking task force members to fight human trafficking here in our community each and every day. As you mentioned, Supervisor, three years ago, some of you may recall, we held a news conference at the OCTA headquarters in Orange and to announce the Be the One campaign. And to talk about what the Orange County Transportation Authority was doing to increase public awareness for this difficult but extremely important issue. At OCTA and as the CEO of OCTA, I spent a lot of time thinking about mobility in our county, whether it's expanding freeways, improving our public transportation, working on signal synchronization, preparing for the future of autonomous vehicles. But at the same time, as a public agency and a proud member of the community, we want to do all that we can do to help Orange County be a safer and a better place to live. Unfortunately, victims of forced labor and sex trafficking, as we know, are more likely to take public transportation. Because of this, at OCTA, we took action to bring public awareness to this often hidden issue and to help victims find a way out. Sadly, as you're going to hear more about today, these victims include some of the most vulnerable among us, including children. So at OCTA, we're back at it again today to say that our work is not done and we're still part of this fight. We're proud to partner with the Orange County Human Trafficking Task Force and law enforcement to do our part to put this topic in the spotlight and to let the perpetrators of this horrible crime know that they're not welcome here in Orange County. In 2014, when we welcomed and launched the Be The One campaign, we worked to get our coach operators trained to spot signs of human trafficking. That campaign has focused on spotlighting this crime and letting bus riders and the public at large know that they can be the one to help. It only takes one person to report a crime, to get help for a victim, and you can be the one. This year, 10 of our access buses, one of which you see out here on display, will be traveling throughout the county, and they'll include a large message on the back of the bus about this very important issue, reminding people that children are among those affected. The message will also include the national hotline for people to get help, which is 888-373-7888. At OCTA, through our own staff and contract bus operators, we have trained more than 1,100 men and women who operate our buses each and every day throughout the county of Orange to spot signs of human trafficking and how to find help. That's 1,100 people every single day that are out there helping us with the Be The One campaign. This training system was developed with the help of the Human Trafficking Task Force, and we are very thankful for their assistance in that manner. We hope to encourage those who see the Be The One message to go online, to read the heartbreaking personal stories and to find out how to help. I encourage you to go online and learn more at OCTA.net slash BT1. Lastly, in keeping with our campaign, I urge all of you to educate yourselves about the signs of human trafficking because you can be the one. The one with the power to change the life of the victim with a simple act of speaking up. Thank you. So I always tell Daryl, like I said, there's 1,100 knives, and just think about that, right? All of our bus drivers are trained, and we have video on all of our buses. And so we can not only have eyewitnesses through live testimony if it goes into court or if women are hearing, but we also can offer that video evidence in the evidence. So closely together, often folks think with a court system that's adversarial, and that's very true. That will happen. But what I will tell you, the special aspect of the juvenile court and the collaboratives that are here today, um, I couldn't mention all of them, but I will tell you, we work so closely and I'm so proud of what has been accomplished and what we will accomplish on behalf of our kids. Once we realize that these children are our kids, we take a step forward like nobody can recognize. I just returned from a trip to Oklahoma City not a lot in Oklahoma City, I apologize if there's any Hokies out here. Uh, but I took my, my 88 year old father, we went to the memorial. And what I was left with is a couple of comments from some wonderful people there and stories from survivors. That is a story that has to be told. It's not a, a comfortable one, like Supervisor Spitzer has told you about human trafficking and the children that are at the hands of some of the most insidious, devastating, corrupt individuals, those being their exploiters and the sex purchasers. So please know the story must be told because we have to have awareness. 
education and awareness, and thank you to OCTA and its buses, and thank you for all of the leaders that are present here today. And Supervisor pointed out, Dr. Morgan from Vanguard was on this boat long before we all jumped on. And we're glad to be on that boat with her, and I thank her for her leadership. When she first brought me onto her ship back in 2011 or so, I had two girls in my courtroom that were dedicated to addressing the special needs and resources of these severely abused children. And folks, take away today that point. These are children of horrific sexual child abuse. We've got to make sure people understand these are not prostitutes. These are children that have been sold into sex trafficking, that purchasers are no different than the molesters that you hear about, that folks rally around, that people want to protect. We need to do a better job on that education piece. We need to be the one to help out. We need to pass that information along so that folks won't call my children, my kids in my courtroom, prostitutes, promiscuous that they're complicit somehow because they walked into a hotel room or a John or a, I want to make sure you call them sex purchasers because that's what they are. They're child abusers is what they are, folks. Let's remember that. And let's treat my children as the victims that they are. Let's not call them criminals. Let's not label them for that conduct. We are so fortunate that we have collaboratives like our key unit, a special prosecution unit, the task force led by Sergeant Rebel with the Trafficking Task Force. I have special lawyers that are dedicated from the Public Defender's Office, from my Minors Council panel, and all my very trained individuals from healthcare, social services, Department of Education. These have to be trained people. Expertise is so important in this area because if you don't understand the severe trauma, the complex trauma my youth have been through, then you misunderstand who they are, and they're not treated fairly. So please, be the one to help out. Understand, we are doing a much better job. Those numbers that Supervisor Spencer told you of, those are devastating, horrific numbers. But the fact that we're identifying this youth now, and we are resourcing them and providing them with the special care and treatment that they need, that's a step in the right direction. Please know there's threats out there to our country. There's threats by way of extremist terrorism we watch on the news. There's threats by the political divisiveness that we see like no other before. But you know what the biggest threat is? The fact that we don't take care of our children. That's our future. Be the one. Take care of our children and put them first. This campaign, along with all of these collaboratives, the leaders that sit with me side by side and that are out here in this audience, Please help us get the message out, the education. It's sad that my numbers from Dr. Morgan's original two or three in 2011, I now have 47 children in my court. That's a wonderful thing because I have resources and a team now to work with it since the passage of SB 855, understanding that children come under the child welfare jurisdiction. That's not enough. So please join me in fighting this insidious, horrible conduct and be the one to help out with my kids. Thank you. Thank you, Judge Hernandez. Thank you very much, Judge Hernandez. Our next guest and speaker is Under Sheriff Don Barnes of the Orange County Sheriff's Department. He's been a tremendous leader in the fight against human trafficking in Orange County, and the Sheriff's Department has a tremendous number of resources, uh, not only under the leadership of Sher Sheriff Sandra Hutchins, but fully funded by the Orange County Board of Supervisors. Please welcome under Sheriff Paul Barnes. I was told I was falling into an environment where I wouldn't have to adjust this microphone for this night. Sure. The Orange County Human Trafficking Task Force was formed in 2004 in order to handle the complex nature of human trafficking crimes in Orange County. For the first time, instead of treating these victims um, as uh, as criminals, and oftentimes re-criminalizing or victimizing them through a criminal justice process, we started looking at them as victims. 
The task force is a collaboration of law enforcement, victim services providers, nonprofit organizations, faith based organizations, and most importantly, the community. Its purpose is to work together to protect victims, prosecute offenders, prevent further perpetration of these heinous crimes, and build partnerships to help increase service capacity and resources, resources for trafficking survivors. The elite agencies on the task force include the Anaheim Police Department, Community Services Program, also known as CSP, Victim Assistance Program, the Huntington Beach Police Department, the Salvation Army, the Orange County District Attorney's Office, the Orange County Sheriff's Department, and the California Highway Patrol. In 2013, the Orange County District Attorney formed the Human Exploitation and Trafficking Unit, and it wouldn't be a law enforcement unit, we can call it an acronym, HEAT, which targets perpetrators who sexually exploit and traffic women and underage girls for financial gain, including pimps, panthers, and human traffickers. Now, you may ask, between 2004 and 2013, have they made a difference? I'm going to tell you two examples that I know are testimony that there was a tipping point. Years, probably a decade or more, it would be very unusual to have interactions between uh, women who are trafficked uh, and law enforcement. About a year ago, four young women approached a uniformed deputy sheriff dressed like me today, walked up to him and said, we heard you can help us. That is a huge progression in the relationships between the collaboration you see in this panel today and those who are trafficked. Three of those women were underage. They were teenagers. The resources provided them have given them assistance, helped them recover, and reunited many of them with their families. Several so Orange County law enforcement agencies have de dedicated assigned officers to focus solely on the sexual exploitation of minors within Orange County. Through continued training, Orange County law enforcement recognizes the best approach to children who have been sexually explo exploited is victim-centered, strength-based, and accounts for the trauma and violence these children have experienced. We value our partnerships with county agencies, such as the Social Services Agency, the healthcare agency, as well as community-based organizations, such as CSP, Community Services Program, so that we can better address the complex treatment needs of these youth. Now, as mentioned before about uh, the complexities we have and how this is challenging, I believe that Orange County, with the program that's being implemented, be the one, the collaboration of the uh, government agencies, faith-based agencies and community agencies has uniquely positioned us to make a very effective. In Orange County, we have created a system in which law enforcement officers can identify commercially sexually exploited children and work collaboratively with county agencies and community-based organizations to avoid arrests, keep them safe, and provide them with the services that they need to escape exploitation. Too. <laughs> All right. Um, so Chief Raul Casada from the city of Anaheim couldn't be here today, but uh, in his stead is his very skilled deputy chief, Harvey, uh, and thank you for filling in. He was making his notes on his palm as he was walking in. When I was in the police academy, uh, we learned that old trick, right, that you would write things inside your palm, because uh, when you're talking, then no one knows that it's inside your palm. So we'll see how you do. Congratulations to you today. Come on up. We're really proud of you. Come on up. Please welcome Deputy Chief Harlan. But having been involved uh, from the, uh, the outset of this program, um, it is something we're passionate about. And it's something that's easily spoken about. It is uh, these are particularly heinous crimes, as the under sheriff talked about. As uh, Deputy Chief of the Police Department, I'm very proud that we are the lead agency for the task force. And as was stated in 2010, we did flip the model um, on our approach to this problem, where we, we treat their victims as what they really are victims. And, and these, these perpetrators, uh, they're preying on the helpless in our communities, they're preying on those most vulnerable. That's what everyone needs to take away from this, is they, they know the cues, they know. Uh, to look for and know what um, these 
these young people are suffering from and they exploit the younger people. So last year, half of the, more than half of the victims was rescued by the Orange County Human Trafficking Task Force in June, which is a very sobering statistic. Um, but it got us to redouble our efforts and to really think about the relationships that we have with our various state and local and county agencies. And from that, we increased our relationship with uh, Children and Family Services specifically. And from that uh, enhancement of that relationship, we created a training program. We trained over 100 officers between our agency and the task force and the CFS. We trained officers in what to look for out the field. There was a very, very good case recently in the city of Irvine where one of these patrol officers, working patrol, went on a call and learned from the training the differences, sometimes very subtle differences between domestic violence and trafficking, and realized this is not domestic violence, this was trafficking. It was, uh, the victim had been stabbed by the perpetrator, but it was not domestic, domestic violence. So we created these, um, this relationship and the need for an emergency response unit. Because a lot of times this is three in the morning when we're looking for a place to house these young people. You know, you can imagine the trauma they're going through. They're away from home, they're hundreds of miles from home, they're being victimized. And now it's three in the morning, they're with the police, they're being talked to, they're getting interviewed. It's a very emotional thing, business for CSP and the other agencies. But this emergency response team has brought to bear a lot of resources and avenues for those three in the morning on Sunday to get these, these folks what they need. It's another very good tool to help us with this, uh, this cause. So, yes, as the under sheriff said, word is out that Orange County is not a safe place to do business for traffickers. They know it. We know firsthand we're talking about it with their colleagues. Uh, it's not a safe place for them, but the lure that the amount of money that can be made here keeps bringing them back. That's what you can Put the next crook in jail uh, for 20, 25 years. Anyway, thank you for being here. Appreciate it. So I'm about to introduce a very recognizable face, probably one of the most recognizable faces in our efforts here in Orange County, and that's Lita Mercado. She's the Director of Victims Assistance Programs with the Community Services Program. They also contract with the Orange County Board of Supervisors and provide our victim witness services as well here in Orange County. Uh, Lita is a phenomenal leader in our county. Would you please welcome Lita to the stage? Me. It's only my team's fault because they do all the hard work and then they make me stand in front of the microphone. So, good afternoon. My name is Lisa Mercado, and they're nodding their heads. I am the director of CSP Victim Assistance Programs. CSP, or Community Service Programs, is a local nonprofit which serves as the co chair and lead victim service provider for the Orange County Human Trafficking Task Force. And as the under chair had already shared, since 2004, CSP and the Orange County Human Trafficking Task Force have been working together to combat human trafficking in all its forms. During our 13-year history, there have been benchmark moments, some of which you've already heard. These benchmark moments have propelled the task force onto new levels. In 2010, with the leadership of the Anaheim Police Department, they created a cultural shift in how law enforcement addresses this issue. In 2013, the Orange County District Attorney's Office created the HEAT Unit, a human exploitation and trafficking vertical unit specifically dedicated to addressing human trafficking. Effective the inception of that today, the launch of the Commercially Sexually Exploited Specific for Children Be the One campaign. You have heard the numbers reported by my colleagues. These reflect an increase in the number of CSEC victims identified here in the county. And the task force believes that the primary reason for this increase is due to the targeted awareness, education, and training efforts. In the early 1960s, the medical field uh, introduced research drawing attention to the abusive origin of some of the childhood injuries. And prior to this, many of those injuries and deaths suffered by these children were not identified by what they actually were, but child abuse by the hands of the adults that were caring for. Since the awareness, education, and training on this issue, the numbers of child abuse and neglect steadily increased from around 60,000 in the, in the 1970s to over a million in the 1980s. The number is increasing over the decades as awareness campaigns and training improved. 
training with social services providers and teachers help to continue this increase and mandatory reporting laws even more so. Much like the landmark discoveries of child abuse of the 60s, resulting in an increase in community awareness and training, today's launch of the CSEC specific Be The One campaign will help shape the response to trafficking of minors for decades to come. As the co-chairs of the Orange County Human Trafficking Task Force, CSP and the Anaheim Police Department are honored to be a part of a nationally recognized collaborative effort, which continues to demonstrate success in rescuing victims and bringing justice to perpetrators. Not one agency can address the complex crime of the commercial sexual exploitation of children. This crime is a perfect storm of child abuse, neglect, sexual assault, and domestic violence. It requires a multidisciplinary response, which includes the community, which is why we are all here today. Today, we begin to ask the community to join us, to please be the one to help out. At this time, I'd like to introduce uh, a person who's also a very familiar face, a real leader in this whole movement that we're talking about today. Uh, just an excellent community leader, that's Chris Murray. She's on the city council, and she's representing the Association of Cities Orange County, which is please welcome to us. Thank you, Supervisor Spencer, and to all the distinguished individuals who preceded me today, and so poignantly articulated um, this crisis that faces our communities every single day. It is my honor to represent the Association of California Cities Orange County. We are a forum for cities across the county to work together and truly communicate and develop programs and awareness that it is that so they can distinguish the difference. Um, it is horrific, and we have to work together and communicate every single day to really address this. And so ACCOC is working with the county and with the sheriff's office and with our city law enforcement. And I've been a council member now in Anaheim and really witnessed what our team and our police department have put together when I was first um, elected in 2010, which is the HEAT program, and really recognizing that these victims are not um, criminals and, and distinguishing and providing basic protection and resources for them uh, when they were recognized uh, as, as victims of these crimes rather than arresting them and uh, putting them back into a vicious cycle. So. So pleased to be a part of that. We really have to every single day in our parks, in our libraries, in our places of worship, in our schools, communicate with each other. These traffickers move from city to city. So by working city to city to communicate these resources, we can help to combat it every single day. Thank you, Supervisor Spitzer, to everyone who's a part of this program, Judge Hernandez and others. Um, it is an honor to work side by side with you, and it really is going to take uh, our entire county working together to combat these horrific crimes and to make sure that people who are victims, children and other victims of human trafficking, that they can be safe and they can reach out to any one of us, be the one, be the one who rescues, because we can do it. So thank you. So you see these banners, Social Services Agency, and that's because the primary funding for a great part of this campaign is coming from the Social Services Agency. The individual that runs that department, Mike Ryan, is the director, and he's been so instrumental in making sure that we're all rolling in the same direction. Please welcome Mike Ryan. Thank you, Supervisor. With the recent changes in state law, the Social Services Agency is now a lead agency. A lead agency in, in meeting the needs of our CSEC children here in Orange County. And we recognize that we can't do this by ourselves. We can't do this in a vacuum. Um, as Judge Hernandez mentioned, um, these youth have experienced significant trauma um, and have had a, a very challenging life and unique experiences that really need to be addressed through a comprehensive approach. And Orange County is in the forefront um, in serving these youth with um, a collaborative efforts taking place that we described here, um, beginning with emergency response with my staff partnering with the Human Trafficking Task Force, and then providing ongoing services um, 
through the juvenile courts and with the health care agency, and probation, and law enforcement, and all of our other partners. And I really I want to thank my SSA social workers and all of the partners who, who make themselves available 24-7 every day to help meet the needs of these youth. And they work tirelessly to help um, these child victims. Um, These individuals constantly demonstrate their commitment and dedication to helping the youth, these youth to heal and to get to a point where they feel safe and they have a healthy life. And as I keep saying you heard earlier, we can't do this alone. Um, it's critically important, and that's why we're here today. So thank you for attending today's event and for helping bring the awareness of this important issue. Um, your support will make a difference, especially the difference in the world. Was I going to be representing? Was I going to just be a survivor or was I going to just advocate? And I really had to think, actually, flying in last night about, in all honesty, you know, I am more than just a survivor. I am just being more than a, the woman that I am today, but I am those kids. You know, I was the kid at 11 years old that sat on an OCTA transit bus that nobody paid attention to. Those are my little sisters that are sitting in juvenile hall or sitting in foster care just looking for love in all the wrong places. So no matter how much I grow as a woman, they're still me. I'm still a part of them. And I think my biggest message today to all of you is that they can't fight for themselves. You know, they're not hopeless. They're not these humble up kids. They're built with resilience and so much energy and love. And they need people like you to fight for them. It's an honor to sit beside so many amazing women and men that are fighting for these kids. Because eight years ago, it wasn't like this. And that's the reality. People didn't realize that I was somebody else's daughter. I was everyone else's problem. They all are your children, just like Judge Hernandez says. They're your kids too, regardless of what part of the fight you're in, they're someone's child. They are children that fill up so much hope. I think that people, a lot of people have to understand that their normal is very completely different from what we see. Their normal is being abused and being in such horrific and horrible places of their lives of not wanting to live the next day. That's their normal. Their reality is completely different from theirs. So their hope is still alive, but their fight is much different. They're fighting for their life. They're fighting to survive, not fighting for the next hand or anything like that. So I really want people to understand that it is your job. It is your duty to fight for these kids. They are kids. So the faces that you look at, just like me, there's no certain look. There's no certain type of kid. I was 12 years old with a huge tattoo on my neck and I had my pen name. Not one person ever asked, was I okay? Not one person wanted to be the one to say, is this kid okay and here's a problem. And you guys have the opportunity and that chance to fight for these kids. Be the one to say something. Be the one to step out and say, this is not all right. And these are our kids. Thank you guys so much. And you guys have a great day.